This is the 127th season of the Boston Pops, and it's already been 18 years since conductor Keith Lockhart took over. There are no signs of weariness, though, as Jared Bowen tells us. This Pops season recently kicked off with a rousing start. A petite performer with monumental talent and appeal, Bernadette Peters opened the Boston Pop season last week, a concert we caught in rehearsal. Such a spectacular orchestra, really, really one of the best. Peters, who returns to perform with the Pops this July at Tanglewood, told reporters her ties to the orchestra are long and poignant. I remember watching them on television when Arthur Fiedler was the conductor and then... I got to come here um, with John Williams, and um, um, I went, when I came to sing for the first time, it was actually the first engagement I did after my mother had passed away. It's Pop's tradition to populate its season with the best of the belters from Broadway and beyond. An irresistible invitation, Peters says. You've got that whole, you're part of the orchestra when they're on stage, you're in the orchestra. You hear, it's like lying under a piano and listening, you know, and really getting the whole, the whole feeling of the, of the piano. The challenge of, of what we do at the Pops is always the versatility. It's turning on a dime and becoming different things and working with wildly different collaborators. In a rather robust season, Pops conductor Keith Lockhart has convened a host of headliners. John Williams returns for his annual movie nights, Patty Austin performs, comedian slash banjo aficionado Steve Martin makes his Pops debut, as do the Dropkick Murphys and a salute to Fenway Park. It'll be a lot of fun. It'll certainly add a manic energy that isn't always there at Symphony Hall. And uh, uh, I, th I think it'll be one of those memorable moments, I hope in a good way. The thread for the season, though, harkens to the pop's roots in Americana. Nearly all of their concerts will feature music accompanying the photography of Joseph Sohm, a project entitled Visions of America. These wonderful pictures, literally tens of thousands of pictures that he took over a 30-year span of time that really uh, go as far as any catalog of work can to defining what this country is, how wildly diverse it is and its inhabitants are. We never need an excuse to play great uh, American music, but in this case, it's given something for us to hang our hat on. And Jared Bowen is here along with Joseph Sohm, whose photographs light up the 2012 Visions of America Pops. Welcome, both of you. You know, Jared, I was thinking watching Bernadette Peters. I remember her before your time. She, she was in uh, comedy. She was in sitcoms. And she always had this pixie cute. And she was one of these people who had such a range. She was on things like The Carol Burnett Show. And she hasn't lost any of it. That's what's yeah. so incredible. I saw her in rehearsal. I saw her on opening night. I and mean, if you can, go see her at Tanglewood because she is the consummate performer. She's a consummate entertainer. She still has a great voice. She's adorable. She's, so She's hilarious. She went down into the audience at opening night and, and sat in somebody's lap when she was singing Nothing Like a Dame. I mean, she's hilarious. And that's the thing about her is not only is she a great singer, not only is she a great actress, but she's, she's an entertainer because she's all of those things together. At one point, she sang Fever and she was sprawled all over the Steinway piano on, on the pop stage. I mean, she's just so phenomenal and infinitely compelling. So she's, she did this performance. She'll do one more at Tanglewood? Yeah, out, out in Tanglewood this summer, yeah. So, Joe, what's it like sitting there in the audience? I know you've been there a couple times this week. I mean, looking at your photographs, you know, these iconic photographs of America with probably America's most iconic orchestra, you know, like, what's it like hearing your photographs? Well, you, for me... I Personally, I have to put it in perspective because you were talking about this is Keith Lockhart's 18th year. <laughs> yeah. And the reality is these photographs that you're looking at, many of them precede mm -hmm. Keith Lockhart. Yeah, yeah. So when John Williams was conducting is when I started my project. And I would uh, be only honest to say that in my 10,000 day journey and maybe a thousand nights in a Motel 6, not that I'm wanting to scare anybody, that when you go to bed in your Motel 6, you can't hardly imagine that one day your pictures would be uh, projected 
over, you know, arguably one of the world's greatest orchestras. So, to, simply, it's just a thrill. I mean, I only dreamed in my wildest days that my images would be mm. hanging over an orchestra. How, how did the marriage come about? Well, I began as a musician in my 20s, and uh, very quickly my musical taste outgrew my musical ability. <laughs> so I made a quick transition into another career that was a little more conducive, which instead of going like this, I went like this, <laughs> meaning my camera finger. So I became a photographer, but um, most of the first images were inspired and taken while listening to music. So in many ways, this is a circular journey. It began by playing music, then by listening to music and taking pictures, and now I'm returning my images back to whence they came from with music. So, and fortunately, there's a local musician that grew up right here in Boston and then graduated from the uh, New England Conservatory. In fact, they just gave him an honorary PhD last year, Roger Kellaway, who did the composition. Roger oh. and I both reside in Ojai, California. Um, it's like Woodstock, New York, but with good weather. And, <laughs> and uh, Roger uh, then said, well, you might need some songs. Let me introduce it to my friends. And I go, okay, well, who are your friends? And he said, well, Alan and Marilyn Bergman. Oh, yeah. And I said, oh, that's a pretty good... They sang last th night. They're singing tonight. They're too, singing tonight. And they're like their upper 80s, and they're still fantastic. Vibrant. Yeah. Vibrant and active. Well, right. No, so I was going to ask about some of the other... I mean, Keith Lockhart and the York, they, they're not afraid to kind of break tradition. I mean, I love the fact that they've got Steve Martin, you know, the Dropkick Murphys. I mean, this is well, breaking right. in a little bit. I think it's so easy because, as you were saying, you, know, you love the opportunity. You would never dream of being at Pops, and that's what Bernadette Peters said. She's so excited to come back. I think there are only a few places in this country, frankly, the Hollywood Bowl, maybe in Carnegie Hall, and then Symphony Hall, where people are just dying to perform there. So, yeah, it's so easy for him to sort of break the mold, yet keep with tradition and bring in people like Steve Martin, who is so excited from what mm -hmm. I hear and so enthusiastic to just play the, the bluegrass music and, and play the banjo music. And, and Every season, it's, it's, I think it's very simple for him to, to get people. And he told me that Dropkick Murphys have been after him for years to be able to perform on Symphony Hall stage. And, and he, they really are breaking it open. They're turning it into sort of a virtual music Fenway. They're going to have T-shirt cannons and a hot dog stand and popcorn. <laughs> and they're, they're just sort of going all out. But at the same time, I realized when I went to opening night that as much as we'd always talk about trying to freshen things up and do things new and different and try to get younger audiences, there's something to be said, too, for having tradition mm. to go into that hall and have sort of the same rhythm and the music and, and just settle in and enjoy a really great night with Pops. So, Joe, do they completely reprogram the photographs, the images for each uh, special performance? They, they can't use the same images. Um, there's so many concerts that it's it's uh, not a simple answer. But <laughs> our our 60 minute um, uh, summary uh, to the concert series Visions of America: The Photo Symphony is a highly choreographed 60 minute journey that parallels uh, and Clint Eastwood narrates. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, my search to capture democracy in the 50 states. That is takes you through the landscapes, the cities, the small towns, that's separate the from games. The pops, so. That's separate. Yeah. Then the rest of, and, and that's what I'll always remember about my first meetings with Keith Lockhart when there was a question, should we do Visions of America or not? And he said, well, you know, just to paraphrase, not only do I think we should do it, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't call the entire concert season Visions of America. Wow, lucky for you. Um, <laughs> and the interesting thing about uh, what you were sharing was that in many ways I like to think of myself as America's photo historian in search of images that define democracy. Well, America's orchestra, the Boston Pops, the reason they're called the Pops, in my opinion, is that for America, to express its democracy musically, you need to get beyond Brahms, Beethoven, Wagner, and all the usual suspects of the 19th and 18th century music. And in that way, the Boston Pops are the original pioneer of this concept. So to make music for the common man is very similar to my focus, which is to capture the common man in images, and now we're just bringing the two together. So 
the Fenway celebration. Is that going to be at Fenway? No, it's going to be at Symphony Hall. So say, that's why they... they're going to be shooting T-shirt cannons and, oh. and pops paraphernalia, I think, into the audience. And when so is that one? We, uh, that's coming up. I believe it's on the 24th. So it's all that's all happening next week. It's also a salute to um, some of the Olympians mm -hmm. in New England. I know they're going to have some of them on stage. Hall of Famer Andre Tippett's going to be there oh. doing a narration. So I, I think they've divided it into what they're calling two innings. One is sort of New England athletes and celebrating oh. them, and the second is to celebrate Fenway's 100th. All right. Sounds good. All right. Jared Bowen, Joe Soam, thanks so much for coming in. Thank you. All right. When we continue, hot diggity dog. It's a hot dog safari.